in a lecture on the power of film, the novelist Will South proposes that we have arrived at the era of post-film as a result of a variety of factors, including the ubiquity of CGI, improvements in video definition which have outpaced our own eye's capacity to perceive images, and the omnipresence of screens and cameras in the age of the smartphone, Self argues that cinema has lost its capacity to captivate us as it once did. What, though, would post-film look like? I think it would look something like this. Patrick Kaler's Robinson trilogy is a series of films which have fascinated me for years. In a combination of voiceover and locked, unmoving camera shots, the films, London, Robinson in Space and Robinson in Ruins, tell the story of Kaler's titular protagonist, the eccentric, paranoid Robinson, in his research into the problems of London, England and the economy. We never see or hear Robinson directly. We are told what he says by narrators, Paul Schofield in the first two films, Vanessa Redgrave in the third, who also describe to us his activities, from the mundane, drinking coffee and writing in supermarket cafes, hooking up with strangers from the internet while waiting for a bus, to the bizarre and shocking, sabotaging a fighter jet, communing with non-human intelligences via park gateposts or lichen on road signs, or trying to discern the molecular basis of current events in the hope of discovering a method by which he might travel in time. I'm probably making the film sound entirely too exciting. They are, I think, but they are exciting in ways which differ from a lot of cinema as we've known it for most of its history and in ways which make the films much more suited to the ways in which, increasingly, we consume film today. I've never seen any of Kayla's films in the cinema. I don't know how it would feel to see them in the congregational way in which we file into an art house screen to gaze at Barry Lyndon, Stalker or Solaris, much less how weird it would be to try and watch it in a popcorn and explosions context. The one time I showed London to members of the informal film club I belong to, it didn't go down well at all because people kept talking over it. Not maliciously, I think. It's just that in a group setting, attention seems to somehow slide off the film. But an odd thing happened afterwards. A number of members of the group told me they'd watched it again later, alone, and found it much more interesting. In an essay accompanying the two-disc BFI DVD release of London and Robinson in Space, the psychogeographer Ian Sinclair declares that any future urban cinema should become a cinema of vagrancy, a cinema that requires no audience, a cinema for which the old, obsolescent industrial terminology of film, the laying of tracks, the crane, the cherry picker, is unsuited, but a cinema which is surprisingly suited to a world of smartphones and YouTube. In the second of Shannon Strucci's series of YouTube documentaries on parasocial relationships, it becomes clear that YouTube is, to some extent, entering a period of crisis, as the first wave of YouTube celebrities struggle to cope with the paradoxically intimate fame which this medium seems to have created for some. I think this is because our model for online video as a medium is still too close to TV. We have imported into this potentially supremely open medium the trappings of the visual medium which most immediately preceded it. Presenters, personalities, genres, structures, rules. I think we may be approaching a point where this may change, and that's where I think it might be worth learning from the example of Kayla's fugitive, vagrant cinema. In many of the poetry films I've posted to my channel, I've tried to follow Kayla's practice, but it was only when filming specifically for this video that I realised how demanding it can be to hold the camera in one place, to resist the temptation to pan, to track, to zoom. But it also has unexpected pleasures, serendipities chance collisions of landscape and commercial art which take on strange new qualities in the context of being filmed, the act of being held, for a moment, in a new kind of cinematic gaze. A cinematic gaze which could only exist at this particular historical moment. It is my suspicion that, artistically, exploring this gaze, this kind of filmmaking, may be more rewarding than taking our cues from TV.